For any artist growing up in the end of the 20th century, you sort of begin the journey to abstraction with Kandinsky. Almost as many people live now as have ever lived in the modern world, and we're sort of experiencing the full range of history all at once. So the job of an artist at this time is to try and take a picture of this historical moment. I think beginning with Kandinsky, we can see an effort in the 20th century to create practices and projects that can sort of capture this enormous period of change and really intellectual development that's unique in human history. I'm Matthew Ritchie, I'm a visual artist, I live in New York. I began as a painter primarily and a writer and Gradually over time, I've branched out into installation work and then music, performance, dance, writing. For me, projects always begin when I sense a link between the subject and the project itself. So there's the physical materials of the project, but also the kind of what you might call the spirit or the soul of the project. This is a series of works in progress that were based on a large installation I did at the Moody Center for the Arts in Houston a couple of years ago, which had and integrated performance, music, and dancers who wore VR helmets inside, which was another reality. So they wandered around the installation and any audience member could put on a, the VR helmet and become one of the dancers. This is a piece called The Temptation of the Diagram, which was an addition I did with Getty Research Institute. And it was a four-year effort to really describe the entire arc of human thought. If you look at the history of art, and science and music, the diagram is key. And these are all have been things that Kandinsky would have been very familiar with, all the way back to Goethe's theory of color and the emergence of the idea of light as a physical phenomenon. And he's very aware of this. He's part of this tradition that then goes back through William Blake and back through Pythagorean theory in the 16th century, back to Isaac Newton. There's Einstein, there's Malievich, there's suprematism. And then when you lay them all out, we get this sense of kind of history as just a continuous process in which Kandinsky like, plays a vital role. But no artist is probably more conscious than Kandinsky or writes about it more often of, of how much he's connected to everything else. For all human history, art and science and spirituality and music were perceived as parts of the same project, the human project. Kandinsky was very much part of this story. He's very explicit about his interest in tying all those things together. There's also something kind of incredible and magnificent about this effort to sort of do it all at once. He's carrying the human soul through a time when what the human soul is under incredible stress at this time. Right? He's in every major conflict center. He's in Russia for the revolution. He's in Berlin for the Nazis taking over. It's really a gamble on the future of humanity at that moment. And that is the debt I would say that we owe Kandinsky. Is like he's sort of willing to carry that in these moments of incredible stress. He's a very rational, inquiring, analytical mind. And he's looking at the laws of color, or the laws of music, or the laws of composition. So when Kandinsky makes a painting, it's all sort of coming together, almost like an equation being brought, or a symphony. I feel a lot of affinities with this painting, because it's like you lay out all of the possible sounds and shapes and imagine them sort of combining. It's a diagram of the balance between various forces. It's also an old Roman tradition to have a black background on a work. So it's kind of like a history painting. And what you can see in the imagery is there's the symbols of writing, there's symbols of music, there's symbols of painting on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side, there's symbols of biology, of geometry. And then in the top left-hand corner, there's the circles that Kandinsky traditionally sort of associates with the cosmic sort of beyond. So it's a masterwork laying out his kind of intellectual interests and placing them in balance. The key thing for me to look at is the relationships between colors that you find in the paintings, like red placed next to green or purple next to orange. Because that's for Kandinsky sort of describing really how pictures start to work. And the way that how music starts to work when you play two notes in proximity to each other, you're gonna create a chord. Kandinsky sometimes will place a very light doorway in the middle. So, 
Between the arts and the sciences, there's a keyhole. But my guess would be that's the gateway to another reality. I mean, I'd like to think that Kandinsky would have been all over digital media <laughs> if he'd been around today, because he was interested in everything. But this is the time when the movies are being invented and the world is massively industrializing and everyone's really aware of it, but few artists more so than Kandinsky. I feel we're in another moment like that, where with digital technology in my lifetime, the world is utterly transformed by the scope and scale of what is possible. I grew up in a world where suddenly all the information that ever was was available. But then what do we do with that? Kandinsky is deeply intellectual, clearly, but he's also deeply passionate about the reality of ideas. We need the world to really function through objects and people. But without ideas to frame that, we just have an experience. So it's, it's a balance, and I think this painting is like very much about him taking a step back and saying the balance is, for him, temporarily at least, he's found a peace there.